This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Go to curiositystream.com slash polyphonic to get 30 days of membership for free. Some of the most recognizable symbols in the world may be the classical elements. Versions of this concept have been found in cultures across the globe, but one of the most popular versions today divides the universe into four elements. Fire, water, earth, and air. Each of these elements has their own spiritual and philosophical implications, and because of this they've been used to guide artistic works for centuries. And I think one of the best examples of this is Jimi Hendrix. In both music and lyrics across his career, Hendrix frequently explored the four elements and used them to enhance his songwriting. Let's take a closer look. Fire is a visceral element, heated, passionate, and filled with dangerous beauty. It might be the element that people most associate with Jimi Hendrix. Not only does he have a song explicitly named Fire, but one of the most iconic moments of Hendrix's career involved him lighting fire to his guitar on stage. This speaks to one of the associations with fire, it's something ritualistic. People have called Hendrix's guitar burning a sacrifice, and the iconic images of Hendrix kneeling over the fire feed back into this. Fire is something primal, something raw and human. Many people even point to the invention of fire as the starting point of humanity. Early human society was grown from gathering around fires for shared warmth. And that's something Hendrix talks about in Fire. The chorus is a simple plea, let me stand next to your fire. Let me stand next to your fire. But of course, standing next to the fire is a euphemism for another intrinsic part of humanity, passion and sexual desire. Fire is often used as a metaphor for passion, and Hendrix plays into that across his career. This is helped by Hendrix's guitar playing, searing hot and wild. Just listen to the solo on Burning of the Midnight Lamp, where Hendrix paints fire as a piece of passion, a piece of vitality that keeps him alive and going during long, lonely nights on the road. <laughs> But there's another side of fire. Fire provides the warmth necessary for life, but there are also few forces of destruction as strong as fire. And Hendrix uses fire to represent this as well. In House Burning Down, Hendrix's guitar squeals the chaos of a house burning as he looks at the destruction being wrought in the world around him. Fire is a powerful, primal force to Hendrix. It's the passion and love that keeps humanity turning, but it's also the destructive power of this passion, how it can tear lives and worlds apart if we're not careful. In many ways, water is a mirror image of fire, comforting and life-giving, but with the same destructive potential. Just like how human life congregates around fire, all life comes from water. That's the thought that drives 1983, A Merman Should I Turn to Be, Hendrix's epic musing on the element of water. In that song, Hendrix sings of a world ravaged by war, by the destructive power of fire. In this apocalyptic future, Hendrix's narrator realizes that there's only one way to escape the brutality of life, to return to the ocean where all of humanity originally came from. The sea and water represented a kind of calm for Hendrix, a peaceful escape from the weight of the world. Musically, 1983 tries to capture the sound of water. The main riff sounds like the calm wash of waves over the beach. The instrumental section in the middle is the deep sea, pushing downwards in an extended psychedelic breakdown. At the end of 1983, water provides a true hope of escape as Hendrix sinks downwards and sees the lost city of Atlantis welcoming him and his lover. But just like fire, there's a destructive aspect of water. This destruction isn't man-made though, it's the inevitability of time. Hendrix sings of this in Castles Made of Sand, another song with musical passages that emulate ocean waves. That song paints a series of tragic vignettes, full of sorrow and death. In between each, the chorus sings a simple line, 
Castles made of sand melt into the sea eventually. Castles made of sand fall in the sea eventually. The sea represents the inevitability of mortality, of pain in these stories. The sea has the ability to wear down beauty, artistry, all of the most intricately laid plans of humanity. Water is a calm life, a beauty that you can meditate on, escape to, but water is also the unstoppable, punishing force of fate. Earth can represent a lot of things. Its analog in some cultures is wood, and it's usually related with green, a vibrant color of life. But for Hendrix, Earth tends to manifest itself in another way, sand. Unlike any of the other elements, Earth and sand are malleable, shapeable. You can build your own destiny with Earth. You can shape it into whatever you want it to be. And that's the other side of castles made of sand. Humanity can use the simplest, smallest things, grains of sand, and create castles out of them. Create wondrous music out of basic vibrations. Create new meanings by placing words next to each other. Hendrix expresses how powerful this creativity can be in Voodoo Child's Slight Return. He shows the way humanity can shape the earth, chopping down the very mountains with the edge of his hand. The chorus of Voodoo Child even raises Hendrix up to a godlike state. It's got an epic, ascending riff and a meaningful hook. Hendrix is a voodoo child. He's a human imbued with magic. He's capable of great feats. For Hendrix, Earth represents the potential of humanity and the power of creativity. Though it's not a boundless power, it's a power kept in check by the other elements. Mankind can build up society, build great cities and great wonders, but it can just as easily be washed away by the ocean, burned away by fire. Air is an enigmatic element. It's the only one we can't see, yet it's in us and around us at all times, permeating every inch of life. Two of the most common ways that people represent air are with clouds and wind, symbols that both work their way into Hendrix's music. In The Wind Cries Mary, the air is personified as a kind of ancient, wise force, removed from humanity, but calling on it whispering a name. Hendrix wrote that song after a spat with his girlfriend. It seems to be a lament of a love gone. The wind is a reflection of this absence. It will be forever calling the name Mary, sticking her in Hendrix's mind, even if their relationship ends. For Hendrix, air has a transcendent beauty to it, and an ancient wisdom. If whispers know, this will be the last. This is reflected musically in the calm tones of The Wind Cries Mary, but also in the exquisite complexity of Little Wing. In that song, Hendrix sings of a woman of surpassing beauty. It seems as if he could be singing a personification of the air itself, surrounding Hendrix, letting it breathe her in. But like a warm summer's breeze, the air will fly on and be free. It won't be tied to the ground, tied to humanity. Musically, Little Wing is delicate and floating, but fine and complex. One of the most impressive songs of Hendrix's entire career. The air is an ethereal element, all-knowing and all-seeing, but impossible to place your fingers on. Impossible to control, shape, or mold. The classical elements are some of the most important symbols in human history. By tapping into them and using them for inspiration, Jimi Hendrix was able to create something universal in his music. He was able to speak to the forces around us that shape and change us, and the way that we shape and change those forces. In the elements, we can see the creativity and versatility of Hendrix's career, and we can see some of the reasons he'll be remembered forever as one of the all-time greats. Listening to the music of Jimi Hendrix has always made me ponder the nature of creativity. How do these artists create such beautiful, evocative pieces from nothing? To get to the bottom of these questions, I've been watching Norman Seif's The Sessions on CuriosityStream. The Sessions documents some of Seif's interviews with the great artists of our time. You can hear the likes of Ray Charles, Herbie Hancock, or Merle Haggard talk about their craft and their process. 
I've been working my way through it and it's honestly incredible to see the way some of these people think. Once you're done with that, you can enjoy the rest of CuriosityStream's catalogue. With more than 2,000 documentary titles on all kinds of topics, CuriosityStream is the first subscription streaming service dedicated to helping us on our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. And don't just take my word for it. If you go to curiositystream.com slash polyphonic and enter the code polyphonic, you can try it out at no cost to you. With that code, your first 30 days will be free, and after that, membership is just $2.99 a month. Honestly, it's an incredible platform, and I really recommend you try it out. And please remember to use my link and coupon code to show your support for my channel and to let them know that I sent you. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I just want to give a shout out to my friend 12tone. If you like Jimi Hendrix and you like analysis of Jimi Hendrix, you should go check out his latest video which explores the writing of Purple Haze. I've put a link for that video in the description, so thanks for watching.